For some people, this proposition may seem far-fetched. But ending poverty is both morally necessary and actually feasible. All of us must play a role in making it happen. All human beings want and have a right to live in dignity, to determine our own destinies, and to be respected by other, by other people. Despite the universality of these rights, our capacities to fulfill them vary enormously. And no dividing line is more profound in influencing the quality of our lives than the gulf between poverty and, pros and prosperity. Well, there, there, there's a positive obligation on the bank to ensure that the people who are signing a loan guarantee know what they're doing. Loan guarantees are, are kind of unique in, the, in that someone is giving security or a guarantee and placing themselves at risk for someone else, and they receive nothing material in return. So you've got to ask yourself, why is this person doing this? Do they know what they're doing? They're risking a lot and, and not really getting anything back for it. So the imperative is that the bank must ensure that these people know what they're doing and that they fully understand the implications of what they're doing and they know that their properties may be sold if another person doesn't meet their obligations. Oh, it's very spooky. First of all, probability by itself is spooky. Give me, I'll give you, let me show you how, how probability enters the system. You walk past the store window, mm -hmm. and you see an image of yourself in the store window. You're straight in the part. You're not so bad, you know, for a man of my age. Uh, uh, the guy in the store window who's uh, fooling around with mannequins, he sees you, and you see yourself. What does that mean? A stream of photons from sunlight leaves your face, heads for the store window. Let's consider one of them. It has a choice. It can go right through so that the guy behind the window can see you, or it could be reflected from right. the store window. Right. Some fraction of them are reflected, some of them go through. What well, determines that? Right. What determines right. the future of that photon? And countless such examples teach us that it's random, that it's a throw of the dice. And that's where Einstein made his famous statement, God plays dice with the universe. At every instant of that single object, that quantum object, uh, we have probability. We do not have certainty.
No, that was, and that's an important aspect. As you alluded to earlier, we've previously done work which has proven that in some situations, even people whose blood pressure is not high can benefit from blood pressure lowering therapy. So in this study, the main reason that we included patients was because of diabetes. We didn't care what their blood pressure was, whether it was high or low. And our objective was to see whether or not lowering average or below average blood pressure in diabetics was beneficial. And the results suggested that irrespective of whether your, your blood pressure was high or low, if you had diabetes, you benefited. What's an article? I was asking myself this very question in the post office yesterday, standing in line waiting to sign for, as it so happens, an article. A postal article. Not the postal article. Now before we get ahead of ourselves, an article in English is a word that precedes a noun, and simply indicates specificity. This sounds quite complicated, and to be honest, it's quite complicated to say without spraying everyone within 15 feet, but the concept's quite simple. The definite article in English is the word, the, and indicates a specific thing or type. For example, the train is an hour late. By contrast, the indefinite article in English is any of the words, a, an, or, some, and the indefinite article indicates a non-specific thing. For example, would you please pass me an apple? We always precede a word with, a, if it doesn't start with a vowel sound. For example, take a hike. I'm spending a weekend at Bernie's, or there's a night in shining armor. Similarly, we proceed words with the indefinite article, an, if they do start with a vowel sound, for example, an ostrich, an enormous mess or an occupational health and safety policy. Although the original American Indian cultures were highly diverse, they were similar in many of their traditions. Religious beliefs and rituals permeated every aspect of Indian life. Southwest tribes such as the Hopi and the Apaches had a rich and elaborate year-round sequence of ceremonials including songs, dances, and poetry. The Hopi performed dances to bring rain. The Apaches engaged in special dances and ceremonies to gain the support of the spirits before undertaking raids or going into war. The Plains tribes often sought contact with the spirits by going on a vision quest.
Archery, the practice or art of shooting with a bow and arrow, has played an important part in English history, being the main weapon of the foot soldier and instrumental in winning many battles in wars with the French, with whom we seem to be constantly at war during the Middle Ages. The English favoured the long bow over the short bow and the crossbow, the latter being the main firearm of militaries on the European continent. The crossbow fired a metal bolt released by a trigger, rather like a gun, and had the longest range of any of the bows. But the main advantage of the longbow was its accuracy. The importance placed on archery is illustrated by the fact that medieval kings in England encouraged the practice, and one of them, Edward III, went so far as to ban all sports on Sundays and holidays except archery. Because there were no standing armies in those days, and in the event of war rulers had to call on the populace, everything was done to make sure there were large numbers of competent, if not expert, archers to recruit. When societies were still mostly rural and agricultural, waste disposal was hardly an issue, partly because people tended to make use of everything, and partly because there was plenty of space to bury rubbish. It was when societies became predominantly urban and industrial that problems arose, mainly to do with health. City authorities had a hard time trying to find efficient ways of getting rid of all the rubbish, one of these was to get people to sort out their rubbish into different types, just as these days we are encouraged to separate our rubbish into different categories for easier removal and recycling. So, for example, kitchen rubbish was set aside and used for feeding animals. However, fears of disease put an end to that. In fact, it wasn't until the 20th century that all waste was simply thrown together and ploughed into landfills. Leisure travel was, in a sense, a British invention. This was mainly due to economic and social factors. Britain was the first country to become fully industrialised, and industrial society offered growing numbers of people time for leisure. This, coupled with improvements in transport, especially the railways, meant that large numbers of people could get to holiday resorts in a very short time. Modern mass tourism, of a sort we can easily recognise today, began in 1841, when Thomas Cook organised the first package tour, 
in which everything was included in the cost: travel, hotel, and entertainment. To cater for the large numbers of new holiday makers, holiday camps were established both on the coast and in the countryside, and they became immensely popular. Their popularity declined, however, with the rise of cheap overseas tours, which gave many people their first opportunity to travel abroad. No news is good news. May be true for most of us most of the time. After all, we don't look forward to unpleasant things happening to us. But bad news is good news is true for those who work in the news media, and I suspect for the rest of us at least some of the time. It is tied up with stories and our seemingly insatiable need for stories. Have you ever been gripped by a story where nothing goes wrong for the characters? There's an incident in a Kingsley Amis novel that nicely illustrates this. The main character Jake comes home to find his wife chatting to a friend about a hairdresser both women know, who has moved with his family to somewhere in Africa. Jake listens in, expecting tales of cannibalism and such like, but no. The friend has just received a letter saying they love the place and are settling in nicely. Jake leaves the room in disgust. We demand to be entertained, and while we don't object to a happy ending, the characters have to have experienced loss, pain, and hardship in one form or another along the way to have deserved it.